Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. I want to say thank you very much for clicking on this video, giving me the opportunity to come into your home and clear something up as far as the word rapture. You hear me use this on my channel from time to time because I believe I understand the true meaning of the word rapture. However, I do understand that there are different meanings of the word rapture. So in this video, I'm going to take the time to clear up the definition of the word rapture. So when you hear it mentioned in my videos or see it in the title of a video, you can know what I am talking about. So go ahead and hit the like button if you will and go ahead and hit the subscribe button or that bell button so you can get future videos that we'll put out related to the rapture. This is 2020 and I keep telling you something big is going to happen this year and it could very well be the rapture after we've gotten the real definition of what the word actually means. That's right, we're talking on rapture. We want to give the definition of the word rapture. Um, we're over here at Google and we're just going to put in define rapture and then we're going to go down and we're going to see what it says. Right now, the reason why I decided to look at the word rapture is because of one of these old dictionaries that we have around the house gave me a surprising definition, and I wanted to go look it up. And when I got over to the web, turns out you know it's a common definition, not the definition that we at least that the one that I have always heard of, so it kind of surprised me a little bit, and so I thought I'd share it with you guys see the word rapture here um, the first definition says a feeling of intense pleasure or joy now this is the definition that we see over in the old dictionary like I said we have a very old dictionary around the house and when we look up the word rapture this is what we see a feeling of intense pleasure or joy but then when you come down and you look at the second definition of rapture, it's highlighting that it is the North American definition of the word rapture. It says, according to some millennial teaching, the transporting of believers to heaven at the second coming of Christ. Okay. Now, two things I want to point out to you, to you about this definition is how it's saying that it is a North American definition of the word and then how it's saying that according to some millenarian teaching this is the transporting of believers to heaven at the second coming of Christ now this is actually the definition that I have always heard about what the rapture is um, um, being around a lot of um, religious organizations mostly the, in the Protestant church um, they are taught that uh, before the second coming of Christ or after or during the time period right around the time period of the second coming of Christ that all of the believers will be removed from the planet supernaturally taken from the planet like this definition says being transported off of the planet but notice the stark difference between this definition and the first definition that doesn't come with any asterisks or anything like that it simply says a feeling of intense pleasure or joy that is a much different definition of the word rapture so let's look a little bit closer looking at it from what does it say the Merriam-Webster dictionary it says uh, the definition of rapture they have two definitions here again Number one says an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Okay, now that's similar to what we saw up there at the top. Now, two, the second definition has two parts. So two alpha says a state of experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. And Bravo says 
a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. Okay. So, like we said, we want to explain what the rapture is using these definitions, which actually correspond better to what the scripture is actually talking about when you look over there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and when you look over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as well as the book of Daniel chapter 12, and everywhere else that you start to hear about this event that is supposed to take place in the hearts and minds of humanity, this definition actually fits better to what we hear over there. <clears throat> so let's take it a little. So let's, so let's look at it. It says an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. This is what they mean by being caught up. This is what it mean when it, when when First Thessalonians says that we're going to get caught up with the Messiah in the air. It's not really a physical taking away. It's more of an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Or like it says here in part two, it says a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. And this is what we can expect in the rapture, not really the taking away of our physical bodies so much as being caught away by emotion. See, we're waiting for the great awakening to take place and which is what the rapture actually is. It is when our spirit beings are actually awoke. There's coming a day when all of humanity is going to uh, become uh, united with our spirit man or come to know our spirit man, I should say, because we, we all have a spirit inside of us. Um, he was uh, uh, born there even before we came into existence. Our physical body was in existence. Our spirit man already existed, you know. And even when our body is gone back to the dust or gone back to um, uh, the, the ashes or whatever, our spirit will continue to exist. But how many of us recognize our spirit or realize that we have a spirit in there or experience anything to do with our spirit oh, I'm messing up there <clears throat> this is the first time using this little app here but anyway we're, we're talking about the um, the rapture or the great awakening there's coming a day when all of humanity will come to know our spirits firsthand and there's a lot of events that is to take place during that time for instance to, for instance our Consciousness will become dominant. So it timed out on me and everything went blank. So, but I will take this opportunity to jump over and look at what Wikipedia has to say about the rapture. It says the rapture is an eschatological concept of a minority of Christians, particularly within branches of American evangelicalism, consists of an end time event when all Christian believers who are alive, along with resurrected believers, will rise in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now, this is what we read above, but what I want to point out here is how it says that it is of a minority of Christians. <clears throat> The ones who actually believe this are in the majority, uh, in the minority. It seems like they're in the majority because it seems like, you know, this is what they're all talking about. But I believe it's just because, you know, those may be the most outspoken ones of the group, while the rest of them don't really believe in this, uh, this uh, scenario, this supernatural removal of the, of, of the people. Anyway, let me get back to the other. said this is the first time using this little piece of software that I didn't know that if it went completely blank on me if it timed out that it would actually shut the video off so you were learning anyway so we'll call this part two if we can remember where we were and that was talking about the great awakening and some of the experiences that uh, humanity will go through 
during the Great Awakening. Um, like we said before, um, First Thessalonians chapter four talks about it. First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen talks about it. Uh, Daniel talks about it over there in uh, I think it's chapter twelve, but it may be other chapters that talks about this day. You hear in the scripture how it says some will awaken to remorse and others will be will awaken to shame. Um, this is what we have to look forward to as our consciousness become dominant in our lives. It's going to be a big deal as we start to hear from our conscious. Because to hear from the conscious is to hear from our Father Creator directly. And that's what Revelations is talking about when it says that we're going to start hearing voices. Um, um, those voices will be our conscious speaking to us from within. And like I said, that is... Um, the father's voice that will be speaking to us um some of the other changes that i can think of on hand i, I'm, I don't plan on this being an exhaustive um uh, an exhaustive list of what's all going to take place but another thing we can expect to take place is the laws to be written on our hearts meaning that we're going to know the difference between um right and wrong whereas now you know a lot of people are just doing whatever feels good to them you know and there's you know when you if you ch challenge anybody on their actions they'll they're quick to look at you and say well nobody knows what we're supposed to be doing nobody knows right or wrong they will even question the word of god and say you know who who, who to say that the bible is right i've even heard from you know uh individuals before but during the hour of the conscious, during the great awakening, all of that's going to go away because it's going to, we're going to know for sure on that day. Um, there's a lot of other events of the scripture seems to imply that we will be able to speak to one another telepathically. Um, it says directly that we will be able to um, communicate with those in the spirit world. Uh, we'll be able to see angels and a whole lot of other things is expected to take place during this uh, this great awakening Um which, you know, some refer to as the rapture, even though they, they're thinking materialistically, thinking that their flesh is actually going to go somewhere. Um, that's pretty much the only thing wrong with with what they're believing, because we're all going to get called away. We're all going to get caught up. It's going to be a huge change. We are going to be with the Messiah in the air. It's just not physical air that we're talking about. All right. Um. Maybe we'll do another class. I'm sure we will on uh, the timing of this when it, when we believe that it's all going to take place. I believe that Daniel tells us when it's going to take place over there in his books. Um, we've put out some classes on it before, but we're going to give um, some more detailed classes on that as well as some of the events that will take place. We'll probably do um, list them even more. Some of the things that we that, that we expect to occur during this great awakening um, period. Um, even why, why, why it's going to uh, take place in the first place. And I, just to let you know, it has something to do with this tribulation that's pretty much imminent at this point. But I'm going to go ahead and close this out. So hit the um, subscription button if you haven't done so already um, to get those classes when they come out. Go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Um, if you got something out of this class and leave us a comment down below if you would. Um, we 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 um do try to answer all of our comments and when we get good questions we tend to make videos out of those because you know we we like helping people so um please support our channel in any one of those ways and shalom